Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at Katsuhiko Kondo's Daitoryu DVD. So, in modern Aikido, there's a lot of stuff that's been taken away. It's more about the manifestation of the philosophy. It's more about safety and peace. As you know, it is called the art of peace. And also, it's just all about, you know, straying away from everything that you know, Koryu Jujutsu used to be. So today what we're going to be looking at is a lot of these techniques, how brutal they used to be and also how this is truly an art of war. And we're going to be looking at some arm breaking techniques and also some lethal throwing techniques. So first let's take a look at this technique. So this is the first technique that you learn in Aikido, but here you can see it was far more richer in the past. The Atemi Waza or the striking is far more prevalent. Here you see, notice the middle finger, how it is flared out as he strikes. So I've talked about this in the past. Look at the figure number one and you can see the knuckles are flared up. Now they can be flared up at a particular angle. And as you strike, especially soft tissue, you can stay safe. And the worst thing that can happen is just your knuckle will just close on its own and you can be safe. But on hard tissue, obviously, you can injure yourself easily. So here you see he is pushing to create, an un to create unbalancing and then the strike is going to play its role into further injuring someone. And here he takes them down with the wrist and the upper part of the tricep. So here in Aikido, you just put it down and then you just get up and continue training. While here, he offers um, an additional breaking mechanism. So it's not about just putting the shoulder down. However, it's about pinning the armpit, but also breaking the elbow. So notice how he rotates his wrists outward to further lock the arm. And from there, breaking it becomes easier and far more efficient. So in Aikido, when you learn it, it's obviously from the hand grab before the strikes. And then you just, they teach you this walk from left to right. And then you just put it down and that's it. The art of peace as they tell you. So it is important to distinguish that Daitori used to be far more brutal, but also it was far more packed with details compared to the new Aikido. So next we're going to be looking at here is a form of execution from this technique. So he rotates the arm, breaks it before he puts it down, and then he grabs the hair and reenacts as if he's, you know, slashing the throat of a opponent. The next one is Shi Honage. Again, there are breaking mechanisms that were far more brutal and far more efficient than today's Aikido. So here he explains that if you lock out the arm rather than bend it, it creates pressure on not only the elbow, but also the wrist and the shoulder. So you can just yank it down and without even throwing, it's going to look very ugly. So if someone does not know how to fall, even in Aikido, not just Judo and Daitoryu, but also in Aikido, you can injure yourself quite easily. But here, the way they set up the arm, even before the throw, it's already a recipe for a disaster. So the way in today's Aikikai, or at least how I learned it back in the day, it's very important and crucial to bend the arm as if cutting a sword. Um, I understand why. So if someone does not know how to fall down, especially the beginners, the arm will at least not break. Now advanced with each other, they really don't care because they're just going to do the break fall regardless. So entangling the arm, however, it's really not important. But here you can see bending the arm firmly is very important for safety. Now here you can see Osoto Otoshi. He attacks. Now notice how he goes to the side and then plants his leg backwards not like side or parallel to the other leg. It's very similar to o Soto Otoshi in Judo. Notice how he plants his leg backwards so he can actually remove the leg and then he 
overwhelms the upper body and puts him down. It's different than O Sotogari for obvious reasons as the leg you know goes up and reaps the leg not planted firmly backwards. The next one here is Koshinage. Now Koshinage exists, however, this one here is very reminiscent of today's judo and I had to share it because it's just great. So double sleeve, rotate, you know, use the hips as fulcrum and then from there you cut down the sleeves in order to rotate your opponent on the axis of your hips. So this is a technique that is tested not only on the battlefield but also in competition even at the highest level today. So please these techniques obviously work. Every technique has its context but nonetheless we should try to see where they come from and what were they used for. Now this one here, Obi Otoshi, it is absolutely brutal. So he comes and invades his space, pulls the belt towards him as he is pushing on the jaw. So he is pushing and pulling at the same time and then just slams him down. Landing the back of the head like that is very dangerous. So if you compare it to Judo's Obi Otoshi, it is far more safe because again, Jigoro Kano Sure, he wanted randori, he wanted sparring, but also he wanted safety as well. There's a lot of stuff from old jujitsu that's been removed for the sake of safety, for the sake of coming back, and also you're not training for war. So this is judo's obi otoshi. You pull the belt and then you grab the leg and then you just toss somewhat backwards. This one here, kata otoshi. It's like Seoe Otoshi. So it's an attack or a sneak attack from behind. You can use it to your advantage. So you can load them over your shoulder and drop them. You don't lever the hips because as you see, he's still standing on one knee. This is your, oh, uh, this, sorry, Seoe Otoshi. I will make a video on Tai Otoshi, Seo Otoshi, and Seo Enage. A lot of people tend to conflate the two if you lose the leg like this, if you drop, if you stay standing, etc. So, Seo Otoshi, you don't lever the hips, you just drop down, changing levels, and your arms, you cut down, and then load them over the back and shoulder, and straight down for Ippon. So, it's not used like that only in competition. If you see the old kata, of judo for self-defense there is a surprise attack from the back you can stay standing it would be seo enage but here you can see same thing a sneak attack from the back and then you throw loading on the back and the shoulder and then you throw them in front of you so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon and please like this video it's the easiest way to support me. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.